The Small Business Show, episode 166, for Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that, as you know, is by, for, and about small business owners. Our sponsor for this episode is Smile's uh, Text Expander. We're at textexpander.com slash podcast. You get 20% off your first year subscription. We will talk all about that in a minute, I promise. But for right now, I'm Dave Hamilton here in Durham, New Hampshire. Dur uh, easy for me to say. Yes. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Somewhere. Hamilton. Somewhere. There you go. <laughs> and in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm really good. How yeah, about you? That's good. I, I'm good. I just found out the link you guys posted on Mac Observer that, you know, Facebook didn't sell my data to everybody. So that was kind of good. Yeah, well, they didn't. Happy. They didn't let Cambridge Analytica have it. That's the only thing yes. that link points yeah. to. I guarantee you they that's sold true. Well, that's to true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> They've already. Yeah, I don't know what that's better, but it didn't go to that company, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I was surprised. It's, There's it's a like if you filled out this survey that Cambridge Analytica did or one of your friends did, then yeah. they get your data. And I was shocked that none of my friends did. I mean, because I've got too. like I've got a lot of geeky friends, of course, that are like hyper aware of these sorts of things and not really interested in those kinds of surveys. But I also have, you know, friends and family members that, that to be fair, love that kind of stuff. So I'm just surprised. Yeah. 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 Well, it's seemingly innocuous. Oh, I'll take this survey. And, you know, and I get it giving up your own privacy stuff or your own data, but your friends, that is insane. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a big leap in, uh, in that. So it's a big uh, leap, but it's, it's, it's just how Facebook works, right? Yeah. That's and they're the never, issue. I don't believe. Yeah. And I, and for people, I think to think they're going to stop doing that. I, I just don't think it. Uh, oh, that's delusional. It's just their bus business model. It's, it's their business model. model. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So you take, you know, it's it, to share and to be connected to people and family, friends, all that kind of stuff. There's a risk, right? Yep. You kind of have your stuff up there and however much risk we've talked about this on the show, you're mm -hmm. more public up there than I am. I am. And, you yeah. know, there's not really a lot uh, uh, that really, I think, matters when you take that risk. But, Correct. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of similar to your, uh, when you own a business, you wind up taking risks. And I thought today would be a good day to, uh, look at that segue, man. I like Gosh, that segue. Is, I've clearly been doing this for a while. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, let's talk about risks that you take with your small business and the good and the bad. And, uh, you know, I, I have a certain take on it and uh, I'm sure you may have different uh, things, but you know, I, I, I think that, um, when you when you search online about risks, and I was doing a little research for this episode, uh, believe it or not, and uh, most things I came across was or were how, how to minimize risk, and you know what insurance that you need to have, and uh, you know how to avoid risk. And and my take on it is very different, maybe not very different, but but it's different than that, in the sense that those those risks that are going to come up. Those are opportunities for you. And actually the kind of fundamental secret sauce of your business can be taking those risks that others won't. Well, that's it. That, so, I mean, to me, that's yeah. where the, uh, you know, a lot of times in business, you wind up talking about something that you call unfair competitive, competitive advantage. Right. And, and that can be, sure. Uh, I mean, it can manifest in many different ways. It might be a certain skill set that you as the business owner have that somebody else doesn't. Right. Or you sure, happen yeah. to own a license to something that someone else, that would be cost prohibitive for somebody else to, to have. Right. And, and but the, Correct. the thing is, in order to gain that unfair competitive advantage, and I mean, it, the word is unfair, but it's it's I mean. <laughs> who cares whether it's fair? It's unfair to somebody else, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. It's just uh, you know, unfair in that yeah. it's unequal. It, it is, is yes, I think the way unequal. I the way I look at that, it's it's not that it's a bad thing to have this license or this knowledge or or anything like that. It's just like you are, a, uh, you know, you are unequal to everyone else, and that lack of equality gives you a, a competitive advantage. In order to get that, oftentimes, not always, of course, but oftentimes. You need to take a risk 
to get that thing. Like, for example, I, I'm it. just going to yeah. throw a, 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 a completely not real world scenario out there. But I have a real one for you when, you, when you're okay. done. But yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. let's say you were actually this might actually be a real world example as I head down the path. <laughs> uh, let's say you were involved in the development of a, a, a software engine that you got for free because you just helped out with the development of it. And then uh, that engine winds up selling for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right now, you've got one hundred fifty thousand dollar asset for your business that you're able to start a business that someone else would require a significant amount, you know, six figures plus worth of capital to start. And you can bootstrap the thing. Right. That is an unfair competitive advantage. Uh, And it's exactly what we did when we started Backbeat Media, Um, you you know, because we helped develop an Ah. ad server. Yeah. Right. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we, of course, then the company messed with us and we had to sue them to retain that license. But, you know, like, but but it was worth it because otherwise we had to go spend 150 grand. So it was worth it to spend like 30 grand on attorneys. But you took the risk, right? And in that sense, you you risked your time. uh, Yes. You know, there was no guarantee that this was going to pay off for us. Yes. Right. Correct. And in actuality, you've told the story how it caused problems down the road, right? Yeah, it uh, did. So, yes. you, yeah. So that risk. And then, you know, we, uh, I, don't, I don't know, can't put my finger on the date, but I'm sure it'll magically show up in the show notes. Uh, you know, we had Tim Co- Cody from Commonwealth Financial on the show, I guess, about a year ago. Yep. And he, their, you know, uh, advantage, if you will, or one of them was number one, they took tremendous risks when they first started the company, dealing with lots of cash and doing stuff and moving money around. But over time, uh, they acquired or, or got uh, banking licenses for every state in the country. Yep. And those became very, very valuable. And in fact, he, he just sold their their company. And I know it just closed, I think, uh, a few months ago, that, that sale, to a company, a UK-based company that wanted those licenses. And, you know, that was their advantage because they're very, very difficult to get, especially no surprise in California and New York. Right. <laughs> Those two yeah. very difficult, very difficult ones to get. And, and they had to transition and, and part of their process was making, uh, you know, shifting all those licenses to the new, to the new entity. So totally those kinds of things are, you know, those risks are ultimately what, you know, what, what you get your reward for. And, you know, without taking those risks, I, I would say that you're no different than the person working in the cubicle who never starts their business in the first place. Right. Uh, the person that wants to do it, but sits there and maybe talks about it over a couple of beers or something like that and slowly just sees it slip by and doesn't take that risk that is the you know your chance and that's where you you know you have to jump uh, that's where it can uh, happen take it yeah no that that's it yeah 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 i i I say it i've said it on this show many many times and i'll say it right now ideas are really worth nothing or if you want to have an idea worth a hundred bucks write it on a hundred dollar (laughs) bill ideas aren't going to do anything for you unless you do something with them now the thing i always hear from people is well but look at all the patent trolls out there right because essentially what they're doing is you know threatening people with the patents that they have which are just nothing more than ideas except they're way more than ideas. If you've ever gone through the process of getting a patent, you know, yep. that this they took is, the action. They yeah. took an action. And that's a major like years long m- headache to go through because you'll file for it and then they'll reject it w- w- requiring more details. But you got to be careful because if you make your patent too detailed, then it's not you can't go and troll anybody because nobody will actually have your specific case that's detailed in your patent. So you got to be really clever about it. Like there's a whole process there and you're probably going to pay a fortune in legal fees unless you're an attorney. And maybe that's an unfair competitive advantage, right? <laughs> to put in your yeah, time and yeah. that sweat equity. And so there you go. So yeah, the ideas aren't worth anything unless you do something with them. Yeah. And and you, you find after it, it, if you've started a few companies and you've had some success and everything, uh, you know, from the outside looks very, maybe very easy or, uh, you know, Oh, look at this person. kind of, you know, he must've had a great idea, but you start to attract people that have those kinds of ideas that, Oh, I want to talk to you about this idea I have. Right. Well, to me, those are code. That's a code word, uh, for, or a code phrase for, Hey, I have this idea. I want to give it to you and have you create a business around it. Yeah. And you do all the work because I'm an idea guy and, you know, things like I'm a dashboard kind of person. I like to look at, you know, 30,000 
thousand feet and look down. Those are all phrases like, Hey, I want you to do the work and then give me, you know, half the profit, yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So you have to be careful and how you respond to those kinds of ideas. And, and I, my typical response is, Oh, you know, Hey, that's really interesting. Why don't you write up something, uh, creating, you know, what you would see as an agreement, what you would do, what I would do, which is, you know, we've talked about the working agreement yeah, before yeah, yeah. Uh, here on the show, but I, I push it back to them to see if they will even take the next steps. And, you know, nine times out of 10, not, not to be, t- uh, uh, you know, overly broad, but, uh, it, you never you never hear about it again because right. those those folks don't want to sit down, spend a few hours grinding out a possible agreement because then they're, that that starts to introduce accountability, you know. And I, and I love ideas and sitting around a campfire or, or sitting at the oh, bar or restaurant blast. talking about it is awesome. It's yeah. so great and it's fun and everything else, but it's it's that action. Uh, the, you know, I always joke, I call it a symphony of action is what really makes businesses work. And, and part of that is, you know, the, the risk. And, and I think also that uh, I'm in the middle of a transaction right now, or, or just the beginning of a, a transaction that has a lot of risk. And I've been feeling the last few days, uh, some not insignificant, uh, no, I wouldn't say anxiety, but, uh, anxiety is a little nervous probably, about yeah yeah like maybe I, that's I, it maybe anxiety that's it. is not a bad thing it, you know like I I tell people that I feel some level of anxiety every time before I walk on stage now sure. there's different levels of it like there's the debilitating version Correct. that doesn't allow Crippling, you to even yeah. step on stage right that's not what I feel it's yeah. that I care and I realize yes. that that's it stepping on stage to do any kind of performance including simply speaking for five minutes is fraught with risk. Anything could happen. You could forget what you're saying. You could remember what you're saying and then realize 10 minutes later that it's wrong. (laughs) You you know, like you could be, you could, you could think you're doing absolutely the right thing and find out three days later that somebody sued you for slander because you, you know, you said something, right? I mean, there's like a million things that could totally go wrong and you want to get it right. Or I do. And so I always feel that anxiety. So like there's different, like you said, you didn't want to use the term anxiety because it's not crippling to you. But it's fuel. Yeah. I find that it's actually fuel. Yeah. It's motivating. Right. Yeah. And so I, I would say, or at least in my case, when there's a, a, a risk involved and you take the plunge, uh, which I've done in this case, and I'm going to talk about this uh, transaction once it closes, uh, you know, shortly and we'll, we'll, we'll use it as an exercise. Sure. I automatically start to think like I find myself laying awake at night going, okay, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. It it is definitely pushing me because I have this innate, you know, fear of failure. And I, I'm, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't talk about things a lot until I start to see some success. And I realize I I like that because of course it makes you look good. You know, it's the highlight reel. It makes me look better. Yeah. The highlight reel. Plus highlight reel. Yeah. And it also makes me seem, uh, is, I'm, uh, I hate this word, but I'm going to use it anyway, less flaky. And people that do lots of different things and have their hands in different, you know, jars and all businesses and this and real estate and that, sometimes can when you try to explain to people what you do, they kind of look at you with this blank stare like, what? You know, well, it's some new nutty idea or something that you're doing. So I typically don't talk about it until I'm already done having some success. Having but, se- now that's smart. I, I, now that make that makes sense to me because to me, it's normal that you would have, you know, like ver- 16 things going on all at varying Correct. stages of development. And, and, and half of those might never come to fruition or even more than half sometimes. Yeah, right. More than that. And that, but to me, that's, that's right. normal, but, but you're right. I, I, when I'm, when people ask me what I do, I usually lead with 20 years ago, we started a website called Mac Observer that publishes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it, right. That publishes these things. I've done and, that too. And then yeah. from that, we've spun off a bunch of other related businesses. Right. Because now I've, I've sort of incorporated this. I have my hands in a lot of things, but here's the one yeah. that you a may have heard of and B is, is, you know, successful, Maybe most or stable, es- established. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, established. That's a good word. And and I've done, I, I do the same thing and I've typically changed it to be like, Hey, well, I own a few small businesses and some real estate and I'm done. And, and then if done. they yeah. ask, ask a little more, then I would go, Oh, well, we do this and do that and do that. I mean, it'd take me a half an hour to get down to the small business show podcast. Of course. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, no offense. It, it, That's right. Yeah. It, yeah. No, of course not. Right. But, but it's like uh, your wheelhouse 
continues to expand. And if, and if you're talking to someone that's a W2 earner, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. And nope. I've employed W2 earners for my whole life and that's great. And, uh, but if, if it's somebody that's getting a paycheck every couple of weeks, as your wheelhouse description expands into all these different things they do, I, sometimes it, it can, it can go awry and they look at you yeah. like, Oh wow, this guy's a flake or that kind of thing. So, or he's trying so to I, boast, I, I say, right? I mean, yeah, I trying to boast, them, which them, I, yes. Yeah. And that's absolutely, never, absolutely. Like, that's never the, well, no, that's never, the that's never a good thing. No, it's never, it's yeah. never a good thing. Yeah. But that's the part about talking about successes instead of, you know, um, trying this new thing, you know, yep. but, uh, so, so I think coming back to the, you know, the risk, it, it, it really focuses your, uh, focuses you to minimize failure and to maximize the opportunity because like in this new, you know, transaction opportunity risk that I'm involved in now, it, it's going to be a great story if I make it successful. Uh, you know, if it's not, it's going to be a great lesson, but maybe I won't talk about it quite as much. Right. Right. And, <laughs> well, and it'll so come I, up I, in, I, in very compartmentalized ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, we spin, we're going to do a show next week, uh, all about, you know, your charm, living a charmed life based around your small business or businesses. And one of those things, you know, benefits is you get to kind of create your own reality. So Mm -hmm. instead of someone else telling your story, you get to tell it yourself. And so you can pick and choose. And even, uh, you know, when you're talking about failure, you can discuss it in such a way. It's like, wow, I really learned a lot. And, you know, it's I use the phrase, it, it can't, Man, Nelson Mandela said it first, but it's like, I never lose. I either win or learn. And it, it's so true. So if you can, you know, couch it in such a way that, uh, oh, I really took a bath on this deal, but what I really learned was this, and it set me up for the next opportunity because I already knew, you know, this kind of thing. So I want to, I um, want to share something about that though. Just, I mean, it, it's obvious to anyone that's been through it, but just in case you haven't, or you have, and you haven't quite finished processing it, all of these things that Shannon and I both sort of cavalierly talk about as failures. And I learned something and it was, you know, in the end it was good and all this stuff. Every single one of those royally sucked to go through like painful, m- painful, awful, <laughs> awful. Yeah. Like, you know, you say you stay up at night thinking about, oh, well, how can I, you know, hedge my bets on this and maybe do this better? That's nothing compared to the, what you're staying up at night thinking about when you're living through one of these failures, especially as you know, That's in right. those, those hopefully few days, but it's usually more than one, uh, where the reality of the impact of it sets in and you figure it out, oh, it right? Devastating. It's yeah. devastating. It sucks so bad. So I just wanted yeah. to acknowledge that, that like, yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a good point of like you mentioned the highlight reel and we talk about it here a lot. We ask every guest about their mistake. And of yeah. course, it gets kind of couched in a in a way, you know, to where it doesn't look that bad, but it can be really bad. And and maybe we should do a show all about failure. Maybe uh, because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, it's tough as a as an optimist and as an entrepreneur, you know, a serial entrepreneur, business owner that uh has come back from many failures, not to couch it that way, because I feel like I'm programming myself as I talk every every single day. You're fooling yourself in a, in an intentional good, well, hopefully good way. Yeah. But certainly an intentional way. Even that like, yeah, like I'm a huge fan of Beck, you know, the, the, the artist. And and when I Uh. listen to his song, you know, I'm, I'm, I hate to even say it, but he has a song where the, you know, the lyrics are, I'm a loser, you know, baby. And I always change it to you're a loser (laughs) because (laughs) I cannot sing that song and say that word because for, you know, 30 plus years, I've been telling myself, no, no, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. And it's really, and it's worked for me. So, yeah, uh, you know, so I, I think the, in, in addition to, uh, motivating you, it kind of can help prove to yourself that, Hey, I am a badass. And, you know, you're our inner judge. Uh, I think part of the human condition is that we're most people, maybe not, maybe not everybody, but certainly speaking for myself, I guess, sure. Uh, your our inner judge is often very critical. And so you need to, to train that, uh, judge over time to create a, what I call a circular self-fulfilling engine that leads to your inevitable success. That was a mouthful. Uh, and I'll say it again. It, it, 
the circular thing that once you have some success and you feel good about it and you start training your your inner voice, if you will, that, look, I did this. I came back from maybe it was a, f- a little failure and I built on it. But then consciously or subconsciously, you're going to keep thinking about that and it will you know, lead to more success on top of that. And yeah. and I really firmly believe in this. And well, that, uh, that's why I really like your idea of the, uh, the annual executive summary, uh, which sounds a whole lot more, uh, a whole lot less sexy than it, than it really is where you're essentially yeah. writing this narrative to yourself about, yes, some of the failures, some of the things that didn't work well in the previous year and some of the things you're going to correct. But you're also patting yourself on the back for the things that you did well. And to me, that's really is the most important part of that, because no one else other than the bank, when they show you your balance, is going to pat you on the back for succeeding. Like it just doesn't yep. like, especially the little victories. Like, I mean, obviously if you know, you yeah. have a business and you, you know, you'd sell it or whatever, that's something that a lot of people can wrap their heads around and they're going to say congratulations. Right. But nobody's going to yeah, yes. like, you're not going to get enough congratulations for figuring out the right, like, Hey, now we use Slack. Like that really, like, look at all the time that saved us or what, whatever, like yeah. these stupid or, little or things. We, yeah. We used, yeah. We started using text expander and it just, Blew everything up and made us look much bigger and more important than we actually are. Funny that you should mention that, Shannon. You're the king of segues <laughs> today. That reminds me, I want to talk about our first sponsor for this episode, which coincidentally is Text Expander, where at textexpander.com slash podcast, you get 20% off of your first year subscription to something that you did just accurately describe, right? The year that you start using Text Expander is a year that you should absolutely and will pat yourself on the back for doing a great yeah. thing for yourself and your business. Like I say it every time we do this, it, this is an app slash service that I simply wouldn't want to use my computer or or do business without. Text Expander lets you take all those bits of text that you reuse, right? Could be your address, could be your email address, it could be uh, a customer service email, it could be something as simple as your phone number, things that you type regularly and you want to make sure you, I mean, you want to make sure everything is accurate. And Text Expander, of course, does that because you take all these snippets and put them into Text Expander and then you assign them to little shortcut codes. So, you know, your your um, thanks for ordering from us email might be comma TFO, right? For thanks for ordering. And now you've got this email. The text is exactly what you've honed over time. You've iterated on it. It's perfect. You send it out and you're good to go. Now, maybe you want to include some things in that email like that you want to personalize it. So you want to put the customer's first name in there. And maybe you want to put the name of the product they ordered. Well, what you can do is you can make it so that when you type comma TFO and it pulls up this snippet, it doesn't just pop the snippet in. First, it brings up a little form that lets you fill in those fields to get them exactly right. And then you hit OK, boom, puts it into the email. You send it off. You're good to go. And here's the cool part. Text Expander for Teams lets you share those snippets with everybody in your company. So everybody's operating literally from the same script. It's awesome. You got to check it out. It is. TextExpander.com. Yeah, yeah, form- oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say the form function is it, one of the things that really separates Text Expander. There's, there's, you know, there's a few other, you know, uh, mm-hmm. shortcut type apps out there, but being able to, to, you know, set that up to where you or your employees uh, can fill that stuff out on the fly is, is really powerful. I it's love it. It's huge. Yeah. So visit textexpander.com slash podcast. That's where you'll get 20% off your first year. When you're checking out, they'll ask which podcast. Make sure, of course, we'd love it if you see, if you selected Small Business Show from that. Um, and there you go. Thanks to Text Expander cool. for, spon- yep. for supporting this and sponsoring this episode. 
Yeah, man. Awesome. Hey, and I wanted to make a comment too. You were talking about the executive summary and I totally agree. And the other thing that we've talked about on the show, and I posted a link to it today in the small business support group at uh, businessshow.co slash Facebook, uh, was a, what I, we call a success list. Oh, and it's go. just a, yeah. uh, a, a brief, you know, one pager that, uh, talks about your success and, and it reminds you of, um, you know, what, what things have worked well for you in the past year or whatever. And it could be anything, you know, we hired a couple new successful employees. We started using, you know, a new app that was great, like text expander. We did this, we did that. And, and so uh, it, it's good to pause and you know, write this stuff down and then keep it in front of you. You post it on your wall next to your desk or keep it on your computer or whatever. Because again, it's all about that. You're programming yourself uh, to uh, from that success, which is going to lead to, you know, more success down the road. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Cool. That's good. And uh, what I want to do is also, you know, uh, the... It, you know, we talk about risk all the time and, and, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to sound cavalier about it. You know, it is important to take calculated risks, right? You, you want the lowest risk with the highest reward. Uh, you can't eliminate it. And I think you do need to embrace it. You know, it, it's definitely worked for me, but you know, you, you minim, minimize that risk with things like good insurance, a good attorney, a good banker, and a smart accountant. And, you know, with those, that group, you just created your own board of directors, uh, your advisory board, which we've talked about here on the show as well. Um, and those people can help you, uh, you know, when you, when you need it. But at the same time, you don't want to fall into trap about asking their advice to take risk because all of those actors, are, are, you know, are typically adverse to oh, taking yeah. risks. They're right? going to tell you not to take the uh, risk. Yeah. They're going to tell you not, you know, you, you want to have a good insurance in place before you take the risks. You want to have your attorney, you know, they're, there to, you call your attorney and say, I'm doing this. How do you help minimize the risk in this? Do I need a, a you need help doing an agreement? Do we need to start a new LLC? Do we need to do this? They can help you with that. I, I, um, I like that. It, I'm I'm doing this. I, I do this with with um, my employees, too. Right. You just tell them, here's what we're going to do. We're going to. And with employees, I always say, we'll test it out for two weeks. You know, I love that. Too. Right. Yeah. You know, but Great. but with your attorney calling, calling them up and asking should I do this versus I'm doing this? You know, what do we need to put in place? If they really think, and this is true of, of, of certainly my employees and probably yours. If you tell somebody we're doing this and they truly think that it's like the worst thing you could do and will crater your business, they're going to tell you that whether you ask them, should I or not? Correct. Right. So you yep. will get that like, but it filters out the, uh, the advice for the sake of advice where, you know, whereas if you ask for, Hey, what do you think about this? Like you're literally asking people to tell you what they think, as opposed to I'm doing this. They're only going to chime in if they have something that they feel very strongly about. And, and I, yeah, I like, and, and I like you, that. Yeah. Yeah. And you make it clear to, to like your attorney, Hey, this is going to happen. Your job now is, you know, uh, how do we minimize it? How do we protect ourselves? How do we protect? And, that's right. Unless, yeah, how do we protect? And that's that's what they do, you know. And and uh, you know the ba the banker, you should have that relationship beforehand and have cash lined up to use before you need it. Because if you call your banker and you know your relationship guy who is not the ultimate decision maker, uh, and, and you say, oh, I want to do X. That's totally different. And then they start analyzing whether it's a good idea in this. And, you know, there's nobody that's more r risk averse than a, than a banker. Uh, <laughs> you know, they want, the, it, yeah. they're, they're not the one to ask, you know. And, and then finally, your accountant, you want to tell him kind of well, some different, yeah, I guess, different opportunities. It would be, a, a, you know, different timelines, but either during or maybe even after to help you minimize your tax liability, uh, make sure your books are clean and everything. So you can minimize paying taxes and risk, I guess, from all that cash that you're going to make by taking the risk in the first place. So yeah. those yeah. are great people to have on board your team, but don't let them steer you away from opportunities. No, they're your advisory board, not your management board. 
Uh, right? Yeah. You don't work for them. You, <laughs> in fact, that's right. You'll figure it out pretty quick. Uh, they work for you, and you pay them. So uh, yeah, don't let them don't let them run the ship, but let them help you guide the ship. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It works out pretty good, and and uh, otherwise, it's. Uh you know, you may really value their opinion, but it's just that it's just opinion. Yep. And, and it's, it's better sharing a beer with them at some point and them going, man, I can't believe you pulled that one off. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, totally. That happens all the time. Yeah. Or at least yeah, it's fun good. when it does. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah one, yeah. one last or, thing, you, you know, go ahead. Uh, uh, one thing, I don't know where you are on your list. Yeah. Uh, I'm, but, I'm, I'm done. I'm ready to, to listen. Yeah. One, one last thing I want to throw out there is, the risk involved with setting up a corporate structure is so minimal these days that it, there's few scenarios where it's not worth putting a company in place early in the process. Um, and I, I say this from so personal true. experience. I, you know, it had been a while since I'd formed an LLC myself. I'd been part of other things that had been formed or whatever. And, uh, but uh, just last week. I, there's this other project. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, I don't know if I'll ever talk about it, to be perfectly honest. Right. Uh, but the, there is this other project that I got involved in just a couple of months ago. It's starting to generate some cash. Like it, it, it's having some success. I probably will talk about it on the show at some point. But um, it was obvious that we needed a corporate structure. Now, we had done a working agreement like we talked about here. We started nice. to hit our – we put a a monthly revenue, a very, fairly low monthly revenue number in there that was like, when we hit this, that's when we will form the LLC. And sure enough, we hit it and it was like, oh, I guess I better – I got to form an LLC to hold up my end of the bargain, you know. And and so it's like, well, but I, I don't need anything crazy. This business is small. We decided we were deciding what state to put an LLC in. Um, we wound up choosing Delaware for a few reasons. Within five days, I started with nothing. Uh, well, actually, I started with one hundred seventy nine dollars in my pocket. Uh, I no longer have that one hundred seventy nine because I paid it to Delaware dot com, who created a Delaware company for me. And within five days, I had not only our uh, you know, stamped articles of incorporation. They're not really articles, but that's what they are. And, and, sure. and then of okay. course, I think they, they call them articles of organization, of organization. For that's it for the LLC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I didn't choose to pay Delaware Inc.com to get my tax ID because I knew that I could go to the IRS and get it in about 90 seconds. So once I had the articles, yeah. I went to the IRS and I got my tax ID for this company and then I set up a PayPal account. And so now I don't have a, a, a real bank account yet, uh, but we will in the next couple of days. It, we literally just got the tax ID this morning. So uh, awesome. but but now it's like it's good to go and we can we can take money in and, and the PayPal thing's important for the way that company's working. And it's just like perfect. Now yeah. we've got this structure. It's not being run by us personally. We can funnel the money the right way and do it all right. And it literally cost me $179 and probably a total of 10 minutes of my time. That's great. So, you yeah. know, I, I, yeah. And, and it's funny that you say that I spent Saturday evening online on the, uh, Nevada yeah. uh, secretary of state website, doing the exact same thing, starting yep. a brand new LLC, yep. not paying, you know, an attorney or legal zoom or someone a uh, thousand bucks or 500 yep. bucks, whatever they charge to go through and do it. You just kind of jump through some hoops and, uh, you can start to, you know, it took me about 15 minutes, uh, a few hundred bucks, and you got your thing with the seal from the, the yep. uh, Secretary of State and the whole thing. Uh, it, it was great. Yeah, so you're good. I, to, I, almost, I almost did that on my own uh, for this one, but I wound up using Delaware Inc. because, A, it was 179 bucks and it was easy. And that 179 yep. includes my first year of registered agent services in Delaware. Oh, oh that's good. Which that's good you deal. need to have. Yep. Like, whatever yep. state you choose, if you happen to live in a state where L the LLCs are subject to awful taxes, like I think both Shannon and I do. You don't necessarily want to organize in your your home state. Yeah. You you want to organize elsewhere, and so you have to have a registered agent, someone that can receive physical mail in the state that you incorporated. So there you go. We yeah. should do a show about that too, about yep. the 
tips for, you know, starting a new LLC since yeah. we talk about it all the time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Sure. And, and another way that you're minimizing your risk, uh, you're still out there doing, putting this thing together, but, you know, you're creating this entity that, in you know, has separation from your personal assets. Correct. Uh, you've got so a separate- If something goes sideways, you know, then yeah, I'm probably yeah. protected as long as I didn't intentionally mm-hmm. commit fraud, which I haven't. You so got it. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great. I love it. Uh, yeah. It's a good show, and uh, I am uh, I'm looking forward to getting it out there and getting some comments from everybody. You can you know send us a message at feedback at businessshow.co or come over to the small business support group. Talk about it. Tell us you know what we did right, what we did wrong, what you love, what you hate. Uh, businessshow.co slash Facebook. Uh, that's right. Yeah. You can also email yep. us feedback at businessshow.co. We love to hear from you no matter how, uh, how you choose to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Keep living everybody. that charmed life. Listen next week for how to do that. 